like is it doing it there we go okay i'm live now hello youtube i um, welcome beautiful humans to today's lecture on intuitive eating so as a fitness training and a trainer in the fitness industry for seven years I, I mostly service women like that was kind of the niche that came to me you know like I I speak to women's issues I am a woman myself right so um so anyways food stuff is like definitely the most common question that I get there's a lot of misinformation out there there's a lot of myths <laughs> there's a lot and there's a lot that's out there like intentionally right like the diet industry is a billion dollar industry it uh it really like there's a lot of people out there who profit off of us being confused and then trying things right so there's always like there's always a new diet there's like right now the whole trend is like carbs are the enemy like no carbs all fat right in the 80s and 90s it was the opposite it was like no no fat low fat everything and that they took the fat out of everything and put sugar into everything right so it just cycles over and over again we end up having these like fads that that were like we spend money to like feel bad and it's we're supposed to get results but uh but it doesn't it's not long lasting it's not sustainable so uh, i want to start off today's lecture by explaining a bit of my backstory again. So we touched on this a bit in the um, the first lecture with this course of uh, the psychology of, of weight loss and my backstory is, so I'm not gonna go into that much detail, but it is important uh, for you to understand some of the brain science. So I'm gonna reiterate that and uh, and explain it in, in relation to the context of what we're doing today. So um, I guess the first thing, that you should know about the brain. So there's the three, remember the three main areas of the brain, the basal ganglia is our reptilian complex. This is the most primitive, earliest part of our brain. And uh, it is responsible for 90% of our behavior. Remember that 90% of our behavior comes from the basal ganglia, which is our reptilian complex. Think about what reptiles are doing, right? Like they eat, they sleep, they reproduce, and they try to not die. Like that's, that's it. Okay. So 90% of our behavior comes from that. The uh, mammalian brain is above that. So that's our limbic system. It's kind of an addition on uh, to that, the reptilian complex. And that's where we get our emotional regulation, cause and effect, kind of simple things. Think about like a dog and like their, their capacity to think, right? Like they're a little bit more advanced than a reptile, but they're still not quite a human. Uh, and then we've got the human brain on top of that, right? So the neocortex is the outermost region. This is what makes us human. This gives us all of our executive functions, all of our ability to think, logic, reason, foresight, empathy, planning, all of that stuff comes in the neocortex, specifically the prefrontal lobes, which are like these two little um, walnut sized pieces of your brain. And uh, I always like to add in when I talk about the prefrontal cortex that like, these this parts of your brain this parts this part of your brain had a little too much coffee today so like a little like whoa. <laughs> anyways um that part of your brain does not develop until you're in your early 20s um so for women it's like 20 to 21 to 22 uh in men it's a bit later so you know the dudes are delayed a bit um with their maturity so anyways, I wanted to reiterate that or to explain that, that kind of basic brain science for you, just because it's really important as far as the topic goes, right? So like understanding that 90% of our behavior is driven by the motivation to seek pleasure, avoid pain and do so by expending the least amount of energy possible. Okay, as animals in an environment, we are hardwired to seek out experiences that uh, elicit dopamine. And um, some of the things that elicit dopamine, so dopamine is a neurotransmitter, which is a um, like a chemical that your body, like a natural, obviously your body produces it, but it's used as a messenger. So it's like kind of like it helps the connection jump in between your neurons. Okay, so dopamine is a neurotransmitter that is related to reward. So when we eat something um, that is like refined sugars or trans fat, it's uh, releases dopamine and this reinforces these behaviors because in the wild like if we were out like foraging right like we're apes living in the mountains or something if we were out foraging and we found a source of sugar or we found a source of fat 
and we ate that, right? We want that to be reinforced. So whatever behavior um, got you to reap those rewards would be reinforced with dopamine. This is something that you're not really, con you're, well, you're not controlling it intentionally unless you are aware of that cycle, okay? So like the thing with dopamine, and I talked about this in the, the first lecture as well, um, the thing with dopamine is that it's linked to your pleasure and your pleasure is subjective, right? So um, there's a certain amount that is just hardwired, right? Like refined sugars, trans fats, they release that dopamine, well, whether you're thinking about it or not. But you also have a level of control as far as that's concerned. So what you perceive to be pleasurable will release dopamine to a greater degree. Um, and you're like, so two people can have the same experience and one of them thinks that it's pleasurable and one of them doesn't. And so the dopamine is released in that person who finds it pleasurable. So it's not the experience itself, it's your perception of it, okay? But again, to reiterate, 90% of your behavior comes from the basal ganglia, uh, which is responsible for seeking pleasure, avoiding pain, and doing so by expending the least amount of energy possible, okay? So when you think about this in terms of dieting, and like caloric restrictions, right? So you're, you're putting yourself into a caloric deficit where you're not eating enough food. Uh, and then you're at, like exercising on top of that, like that goes completely against the hardwired brain science of our of our reptilian complex. Okay, so this is our most primitive brain. It's our most, it's like every living being has this and 90% of every living being's behavior is dictated by this, right? So actually, I feel like even more that so with actual reptiles, but I digress. So um, understanding that is the most important piece as far as this whole thing goes. Okay, so like uh, dieting is not natural, you are going to meet resistance when it comes to that. Also, the other thing I want you to understand from this explanation is that um, eating things that are full of trans fats, so like the processed fast food, things in a box, right, um, and refined sugars is physically addicting to you. Your brain becomes physically addicted when you're eating these things and you, the connection, the pleasure connection, the reward reinforcement that happens with that is so strong that it's almost impossible for you <laughs> without conscious awareness to avoid that binging, okay? So this is exactly what happened to me when I was a kid. So as a, my very first addiction was food. I, um, I came, I grew up in a family, um, baby boomer parents, really focused on making money, not so focused on any sort of emotional connection. Um, I had a, a, an abusive, uh, sorry, an emotionally unstable and abusive stepfather. And uh, so this resulted in an insecure attachment pattern in me, which means that psychologically, I did not feel safe. I didn't know where I like I didn't feel secure with any any one caregiver or anybody in general. And so I was looking for ways to have that security outside of myself, right? Like I needed to find that pleasure. I felt bad. It was negative affect. Um, I felt bad. And so the I turned to food. Food was the, the and it wasn't like I was like, because I was a child at this point, right? Like I was less than 10. I remember my, my first, it was when I moved to, um, we moved around a lot too, but the, uh, when I moved to Forest, which is near Grand Bend here on, in Ontario, Canada, um, and I was in going into grade five, grade four, grade four. Um, that's when I really remember being like on my first diets, right? So this happened before that. So it wasn't like I was like, um, sitting, <laughs> sitting there as a child being like, okay, I'm sad, I'm going to eat to feel better, right? Like it wasn't, it wasn't, um, it wasn't a conscious decision. It was just, I felt bad. And these foods released that dopamine connection in my brain. So uh, it reinforced feeling better when I ate things like Kraft Dinner or Mr. Noodles or Pizza Pockets and Pogos, right? Like all of those like chemical shitstorm type pseudo foods um, that are just laden with all of the, those things like the refined sugars and the trans fats and the just straight up chemical preservatives. So um, at a young age, I was using like my body, my brain and my body like conspired against me to develop what's known as a maladaptive coping mechanism. OK, so I felt bad. I didn't have a, t a secure attachment and I was looking for that gratification outside of myself as a latchkey child, like spending a lot of time by myself or with babysitters eating a lot of processed foods, that became the connection, right? I felt bad and then I used food to feel good, but it, because 
the cycle of that is not long lasting. It doesn't actually make you feel good in the long run. It's called maladaptive because you're using something to elicit a, a feel good response, but the feel good response is only temporary. And in the long run, it actually makes everything so much worse because not only was I reinforcing these behaviors and like increasing my binge eating activity, I was also gaining weight. <laughs> right. And there's like a huge correlation, a very, very significant correlation between um, refined sugars and anxiety and depression. There's a great big nerve. So your gut is where all your emotional regulation happens. There's a giant nerve that runs from your gut to your brain called the vagus nerve. And the information goes more from your gut upwards than vice versa, right? We have this idea in modern um, society and like maybe, um, maybe it's not intentional, but uh, regardless of where it's come from, we have this idea like the brain is the boss, like the brain makes all the decisions, the brain is is the key, but the brain is not, <laughs> like it is not, it's actually designed just to keep us safe. So recall what I was saying earlier, the basal ganglia, our reptilian complex, houses 90% of our behaviors, and it's, it's solely focused on seek pleasure, avoid pain, reproduce and do so by expending the least amount of energy possible. Okay, that's what your brain does. Like that's all it's supposed to do. And as a human, that's like not enough. And especially based on or especially living in a modern society, right? Like it's where there's no dangers. Like we're not fighting bears around every corner. We're not like at risk of dying um, in, in these first world countries. Anyways, I should say. Um, so we're not we don't need that. We don't need that. It shouldn't be making our decisions right? That we need the brain to keep safe so that we don't like bump into shit or like walk off a cliff or something or like walk into traffic, right? Like you need that brain to scan your environment, but it shouldn't be making your decisions, right? So we should be using the gut. And when you're filling your gut with like just shit and chemicals, it's not processing things properly either, right? So, um, so Understanding all of that is is super important because and, and my story is very similar to a lot of other people's, you know, like, let me know in the comments uh, here or here on YouTube as well. Um, if that resonates with you, right? Like, you know, has food been something that you've used as a coping mechanism? And then for me, what happened with that, like the food ended up, um, it's always been, an, it's been an issue for a very long time until like since childhood. Uh, and it was a very easy transition then for me to like fall into other addictions like drug drug use and alcoholism and sex addiction, dating in general, gambling. Well, I wasn't really much of a gambler, but like shopping, over exercising, um, all of these things. So all sorts of disordered eating as well. Because when I was going from binge eating, it was really easy then to exert control over my food um, later on. So, anyways, that that piece is really important for for you to understand uh, when it comes to what what you're what you're working with when it comes to trying to change your eating okay so whatever you put into your body the other the, uh, another important piece is a homeostasis right the body and the and the brain like familiarity they like things to be the same uh, and even if being the same is not adaptive right so um, it's maladaptive for me. It was maladaptive for me as a, as a child to be pouring all of that shitty food into my body. Um, but it was familiar and the brain and the body crave homeostasis. It wants the, everything to stay the same because when it's the same, it doesn't require as much energy to process, right? Like it's like, Oh, I've done this. Like we have a schema, we've got an automatic process. Like it's just, that's the way it is. Right. So, um, you can you can change that though right so like whatever you put into your body the most uh, is the most common thing and that's what your body will start to crave so i experienced this when um so i've lost weight many many times right so if you're following me on instagram here um if you're if you're if you're watching this in the course and you're not following me on instagram please give me a follow on instagram <laughs> because i share a lot of stuff on there as well um but I just posted an image today, actually, that like shows my uh, a lot of different body types that I've had, right? So like I've gained weight and lost weight and gained weight and lost weight and gained weight and lost weight just based on like these cycles, right? So I never addressed what was actually going on inside of me that caused me to have these fluctuations in my weight. I was just always focused on the external and like self-loathing, right? All of my goals were based in negative affect because I hated myself. I hated how my body was. And that is what was motivating me to restrict my calories right so that shit feels bad <laughs> like it feels bad to not like yourself right and the cool thing or not cool i guess the like cool in an ironic like sarcastic type of way 
But when your goals are rooted in negative affect, they're never good enough, right? Like you, I at one point was like 23% body fat when I was, I was working at a CrossFit gym, doing CrossFit all the time, doing crazy bodybuilding deficits, like starving myself, fasting, like all sorts of stuff. 23% body fat, which is super low for a woman. And I was jacked, but I still didn't see that, right? Like, because my goals were all rooted in negative affect, I felt like shit, even though I was super fit, right? So, um, and this is a thing with all everything that we're uh, bombarded with as uh, humans in modern society, and especially as women, like we're all we're conditioned from a very young age to hate our bodies that there's something wrong with it the images that we're fed are not realistic like there's and it's i mean it's changing there are more people who are doing the body positive thing but in like largely it's the, a lot of the stuff that we're consuming is still like completely fabricated right like they take a picture and then they like alter the shit out of it and these are the things that we're fed right as normal this is a normal person and if you don't look like this person then you're not normal also, hey, by the way, you can buy these shakes, you can do this weight loss program. Here's this new diet, right? Or you know, if you don't want to do that, there's a whole bunch of cosmetic procedures that you could have done Just slice your body open, suck the fat out, you're good, right? Like this is <laughs> there's so much of this shit out there, right? And so it's not I want to say too that it's not your fault for feeling like shit about your body. Um, it's just it's we, what we've been conditioned with, right? So since all of my goals were uh, always rooted in negative affect, it, I wasn't ever to, able to sustain the weight loss without it going into, into some other neuroticism. Okay, so um, when it comes to going about this in a more positive way, we have to make the goal feeling good. That is the goal. And I think I said this in the last lecture, too. It's kind of a the theme of the whole course uh, is feeling good. So make your goal feeling good and weight loss will be the side effect. Because here's the thing. Eating shit food over a long period of time or drinking a lot of alcohol, that's another thing that causes a lot of weight issues or makes it harder to lose weight. Um, eating shit food doesn't feel good. Okay, maybe in the moment for like the few minutes that it's in your mouth and when you're swallowing it, it feels good. But one, so there's two branches of this, like physically, your body doesn't it like cannot deal with that level of sugar and fats, right? Like you, what happens if you eat too much sugar, it spikes your blood sugar, your your body produces insulin to try and mitigate those effects. And then um, it stores, it takes the extra glucose and stores it as fat, right? And then if you do that too often, what happens is that your body you becomes no, in, not um, receptive to the insulin and then you end up developing diabetes, right? Then there's a whole, there's a whole host of uh, side effects that go along with that, right? Uh, and like, also, like I was saying earlier, there's the, there's a significant proven correlation between sugar and anxiety, okay? And I notice this now, especially now that I don't eat refined sugar. Um, if I do have something um, like a candy or something somewhere here and there, I feel it. Like I can feel the difference in my body, which is crazy because I went for so long with like, just pouring that shit into myself, right? So, um, so make your goal feeling good. And if your goal is feeling good, that means that you are doing things for their merit and not because you feel like you have to be doing something, right? You're not doing it because you hate your body. You're doing it because you love your body, right? There's also a piece of this that's related to our stress response that's really important for you to understand, okay? So there are two branches of the central nervous system, your sympathetic nervous system, and, they, and they're like mutually exclusive, so they can't be on at the same time. There's only resources for one or the other. So in this, on this side, we've got the sympathetic nervous system. This is your fight or flight, okay? This is your fight a bear or run away from the bear. So you've got increased muscle tension. You've got heart rate that's beating really fast. You've got increased, did I say tension? No, I didn't. I said tension <laughs> and respiration. I'm like, I like do this intuitively half the time. So I'm like, what? I'm like listening to myself talk as I'm saying it. Anyways, <laughs> um, so you've got muscle tension, you've got heart rate, you've got respiration and your focus, all your cognitive focus is on survival and like scanning for threats. Okay. So when this is activated and, and here's the beautiful thing about being a human. Okay. So this, this response is sympathetic, like fight or flight, scan for danger, prepare your body is super adaptive. If you're an animal, okay. Like a mouse running away from a cat, it needs that shit. It needs to get away from that, that cat. It needs to like 
use all of its resources to do that, okay? But here's the thing and the difference between like a mouse and a human, right? The mouse can't think about something stressful and activate that, that response. A human <laughs> can be triggered by anything, literally like the way our brains, our brains are so complex and we have all these like fancy connections that you can, you can be triggered by something that's completely unrelated and activate a stress response, even though there's no danger anywhere. Like you're literally making that shit up in your brain, right? Or you're seeing something that reminds you of something that's stressful and you're creating that stress response. And then because uh, our body feeds our mind and then vice versa, we just end up staying stuck in this stress response all the time. So remember what I said, the two branches of the the central nervous system are mutually exclusive, which means they cannot operate at the same time. The parasympathetic nervous system is then off all of the time. Okay, so if you're constantly living in stress response, you're spinning around, you're anxious, you're nervous, you're butt hurt, you're fucking frustrated and angry, right? You're and like you're spinning around in this all the time. You cannot rest and digest your rest and digest system is completely turned off. This is all your metabolism. This is your uh, immune system. This is your recovery. This is your rest, right? This is all of those healing processes. And then more, and like in the context, we're talking about weight loss with this, right? Like your metabolism is turned off. You're not fucking digesting anything, right? So you're, you're stressed out about trying to lose weight. You're living in stress response. You're operating in a cal- caloric deficit. You're exercising way too much. You're counting your calories. You're being neurotic about it. You're beating yourself up for eating anything that's not on the plan. And what's happening is that that is activating your sympathetic nervous system. You're turning off your metabolism and you're going to gain weight as a result of that. So you're like totally, it's a giant clusterfuck, guys. Like you're basically totally screwing yourself you're poisoning yourself because you're putting you're cramming food into your body and your digestive system is completely turned off right like you're just you're just pushing it in there and then what's happening is that it's it's sitting in your gut and it's going rotten and you're gonna develop all sorts of diseases in your colon right so so it's it's really important that that you understand the this these kind of themes as far as your perception about dieting and food when it comes to intuitive eating because it honestly doesn't really even matter what you're eating aside from like like I said don't eat don't eat shit food okay don't eat like chemically processed things eat foods that you can read the label and that or like you know what it came from (laughs) okay and you can eat that stuff as much as you want because uh, as long as you're pre-framing it, right? So like you're you're feeling good about what you're eating and you know that what you're eating is good for you, right? So like when I'm eating, oh, and the other thing too on that line is that we should not multitask when we're eating, okay? And this one is hard. I understand, guys. I super get it. Listen, I'm a single mom. I sometimes have like two or three jobs I have to do in a day uh, working a client-centered business where you're like, I'm like, would be eating like five almonds in between clients or like eating a protein bar while I'm driving, right? Like what's happening? You're doing the same thing to yourself. You're essentially poisoning yourself because you're in a stress response and then you're, um, you're, and then you're putting food into your body and it's not digesting. Okay. Um, so it's important that you understand that you just like come to terms with eating whatever you want to eat and feeling good about it. Um, and And maybe this doesn't make sense in the, you're like, wait a minute, Jen, like this is supposed to be a weight loss course, right? Like I need to uh, know how to lose some weight. I need to understand how to manipulate my nutrition. All right. So there are some things that we can do within this context without violating, um, without putting too much pressure on ourselves, I should say, right? So like there's no, first off, I should say there's no strategy that is good for everybody. I'm going to give you a, a few basic things that you can start with right now. And then, um, I think this fourth lecture in the course is on more specific nutrition stuff. So I'm going to get into the macros and micros and more specific um, strategies as far as your nutrition goes. Um, But for today's lecture, we're just looking at some basic things that you can do if you're looking to elicit a change in your meat robot. Okay, so you want to change your body in some way. Um, The first step is as I've already said, make your goal feeling good. Okay. If your goal is rooted in anything other than love for yourself and respect for your body, it will 100% come back to bite you in the ass in the long run. Because if you stop feeling bad about yourself, um, you lose your motivation. And if you like, so, so people who uh, experience a significant weight loss, right? Like you lose a hundred pounds, you don't feel bad about yourself anymore. You stop doing all the restrictive things that you were doing to punish yourself into losing weight and then you gain it all back. (laughs) 
right? Like, has this happened to you? This has definitely happened to me a few times, okay? So if you make your goal feeling good, that doesn't happen because you feel good when you do things that lead to weight loss, okay? So um, the first thing that I'm going to give you or like the first pro tip um, is water, okay? So drinking water is one of the most simple things that we can do. Simple is not easy. I understand, right? Like it's really difficult for us for some reason to get the water in. Um, but water being dehydrated is actually correlated with anxiety as well. Like it causes low levels of anxiety into the in the body, and uh, and that alone is enough for me. Like aside from all the weight loss benefits, um, it's enough for me. If I don't drink enough water, I definitely feel my anxiety. And I'm so in touch with my own energies now that when I'm feeling anxious. It's the problem. <laughs> like, this is not where am I feeling this? So like, I can't create when I'm feeling anxious. Right. So drinking water, I have I drink out of jars because I'm that kind of human. Uh, I'll make like a dry erase marker when I'm real on my game. And I'm trying to get six of these in a day. I'll like have a dry erase marker and mark it in. I do things like a, this is half a liter. So I'll drink um, one of these first thing in the morning. And like I brush my teeth and then I drink a liter, half a liter of water. And then I try to make games for myself where I'm just like, okay, before I have any coffee, I need to drink three of these, right? Um, you, there's apps that you can get as well. So you can put an app on your phone. Um, the other benefits of drinking water, uh, obviously with the weight loss, right? Like you're pushing things through, you're, you're not dehydrated, which is a stress on your body. Again, when you're stressed out, your metabolism is turned off, okay? So water helps to alleviate that stress on your body. It also helps to flush everything out of your system. Uh, as well, the other benefit of drinking a shit ton of water is that it helps with your skin elasticity. So if you're somebody like me and you've lost a lot of weight and you've got things like these wiggly arms, oh, you can't see it on YouTube, but you can see it on Instagram. Oh, there we go. Um, the loose skin, right? So uh, considering how much weight I've lost, my loose skin is amazing. Uh, uh, because I exercise regularly, and I drink a shit ton of water. Okay, so that's number one. Um, actually, it's number two. So number one goal feeling is feeling good. The goal is not weight loss. The goal is feeling good. Number two, drink a shit ton of water. <laughs> okay, get it into you pour it into you get it. Yeah, that's right, Cassandra. <laughs> Are you drinking your water? <laughs> I haven't seen you in like six months. But, um, sorry, uh, for those of you watching this on YouTube, I'm also live streaming this on my Instagram. So, um, okay, so drink a shit ton of water. One, feel good about what you're doing. Make your goal feeling good. Two, drink a shit ton of water. Number three, intermittent fasting. Okay, so fasting is something that it, there's a lot of um, pros and cons. There's a lot of people who are for it. There's a lot of people who are against it. Personally, based on my my own results and the research that I've done, um, I I definitely am a firm believer that intermittent fasting is a great thing for pretty much everybody. Um, the contraindication, so if you the the people who should not fast or shouldn't try it are obviously if you're pregnant, don't fast. You need to eat. You're growing another human inside of you. Uh, and two two if you're taking medications that require food in the morning, you obviously are going to need to do that. Otherwise, you're going to destroy your stomach. And three, the third contraindication, so like I have a precision nutrition cert and uh, I've done the intermittent fasting add on through that. And they add disordered eating as a like, if you have a history of disordered eating, um, that's a contraindication. However, I'm going to say that as long as you're following the protocols that I'm talking about here, and you're looking at your body in a positive way, and you're feeling good about what you're, you're, you're eating and what you're doing. Um, it's just something to be mindful of. Because the problem with with intermittent fasting is like, uh, you can get into uh, like if you've got like anorexic uh, or like binging and purging type of things, um, it can cause those types of imbalances. So it can be like it, you can have a trend where you're eating not enough too many days in a row or like you're not eating enough during your eating window or um, the other way where when you start eating, you binge and you go completely over the edge. So I have to be mindful if I fast too long. Binging is definitely a thing that has happened to me. Um, but it's just a matter of, of like being mindful of that and thinking about how I feel and, and, uh, and understanding that I need, to, if I feel hungry, I need to eat. Okay. So let me explain what intermittent fasting is in more specific detail for you. If you've, if you're not familiar, um, it's limiting your window of eating to, uh, tip the standard window is eight hours. Okay. So it would be like the standard window. That's the, the example is, um, you start eating at noon, you finish eating at 8pm, and then you don't eat again until noon the next day. 
All right. That's a, that's a 16 hour fast while you're sleeping. And, uh, and that's eight hour eating window. I do mine intuitively. So I do fasting. I haven't eaten yet today. It's like, Oh, it's 11, 11 right now. Uh, <laughs> so, um, when I haven't eaten yet today, I usually won't eat until like one or two. Some days it's even later than that, but it depends on one, how much brain power I need and two, how much physical activity that I need to do. And then three, also there's what I'm doing, right? Cause my schedule is all over the place. It's not, there's no like days that are the same. Um, so some days I have to eat earlier or later based on whatever I'm doing and my opportunity to eat. Okay. So, um, you can, you can, you don't have to be as, like strict with it, right? Remember, this is intuitive. This is not follow these rules. Jen says that I need to do it this way. This is a suggestion. And I'm telling you that this works for me. So try it out for yourself. Some ways to ease yourself into intermittent fasting are to skip breakfast. So don't don't eat breakfast. That's your first thing. Or just try um, doing it for one day. Or do it every other day right? Or, or take sometimes like on the weekends, I don't, I don't fast as much it depends if I'm tired, or like if I'm on my period, uh, I wake up and I want to like smoke pot and eat waffles. So I do that. <laughs> okay, like, it's and the thing is, is that because I do so well, my goal is feeling good and feeling good for me is drinking water, eating plants and exercising. That feels good. So I do that on the regular. So then when there's days, like every three or four weeks, when my friggin' uterus is trying to claw its way out of my abdomen, like I can lay around and eat whatever I want and it doesn't affect me, right? Even outside of that, like sometimes you're just not motivated to diet. Sometimes you want to eat whatever you want. Sometimes you don't want to count your calories, right? Like, so having that as your baseline, like using the intermittent fasting, one, also the other strategy, the other reason why I really enjoy intermittent fasting is because I find it's easier to be, it's easier for me to be in a deficit. So it's, that means eating eating less calories than your body needs um, to for the sake of weight loss. I find it easier to be in a deficit when I'm fasting because as soon as I start eating, I want to keep eating, right? So I find it like it's easy. And then also getting up in the morning and being a single mom, like I don't have to make myself breakfast. I just have to get my shit ready or get my kid ready, right? And she actually now she's almost 11 and she likes she does fasting most days in the morning too because she says it's just easier for both of us. So, um, So those are my pros as far as intermittent fasting goes um if you have questions about this or this again it's just a really brief overview so any questions um instagram you can message me also youtube you can comment here um, and i can go into more detail i can send you some more resources on that okay so intermittent fasting let's reiterate our, our main action points so far again one your goal is feeling good two drink a shit ton of water. Oh, I didn't tell you exactly how much your body needs at least three liters of water a day. It just for normal cell function. Okay, that is six of these bitches. I need to drink some of this right now. Ah, water. On another note as well, if you want to get a little witchy with your water, um, I charge mine in <laughs> colored vases in my kitchen. So I charge them in different color therapy. Um, so it's solar water. And then I also um, I also collect moon water and the full moon in this great big jar. <laughs> and I drink that, okay? But um, that's some, that's some uh, witchy esoteric teachings. That didn't come from precision nutrition, okay? <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, water, drink a shit ton of water. And then the third action point that we've, we've gone over today is intermittent fasting. So play around with intermittent fasting. Please be mindful, again, if you're pregnant, taking medications, or if you find yourself getting neurotic about your food where you're not eating enough on a regular basis and you're, or you're eating too much on your off days, you're just fucking yourself. Don't even bother with it, okay? Um, I do have to say as well on the note of disordered eating, um, eat less is not more, guys, okay? Like your body needs calories. And if you put yourself into a state where you're not eating enough calories on a regular basis, that is a stress on your body. What happens to your body when it's stressed out? Your metabolism is turned off. So even when you're starving yourself, whatever you're eating is then taken and stored as fat. Okay, so please, 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 it less is not more, you need a lot of calories. Um, and then so I guess maybe that that's kind of a good segue into tracking. Okay, so I'm a real I have I have mixed, mixed feelings about the utility of tracking your your macros and your calories. I think that it can be really useful to get an idea of how much food you're eating in a day. So like, 
when I came up with this course, um, it was early in COVID and I had like, was already rocking a mom bod from taking a year off the fitness industry in 2019. And then I laid around eating snacks and like watching Tiger King. Right. So I gained weight and, um, uh, <laughs> like needed to, needed to lose some weight just because my clothes weren't fitting. Right. So, um, so I started tracking my food and I was like, well, no shit. I'm like, I'm eating like 50% more calories than I need to. And 90% of my calories are coming from fat. <laughs> now I'm plant-based, like mostly I eat meat sometimes, but, um, it's real easy to overload on the fat. Fat is super calorically dense, right? Like it's one, one, um, like a tablespoon of fat has nine uh, calories, right? Oh, wait, that's not right. Nine grams of fat. Oh, I need to look up my specifics of the macros. That's another lecture, but, <laughs> um, there's a great app. The, the best tracking app that I found that's free is called chronometer. Uh, and I'll put that in the, um, I'll put that in the comments on YouTube. Chronometer is uh, C R O N O meter. Okay. It's a free app that you can get and it gives you a lot of really detailed information. Plus it also will give you what your um, color, like your caloric ranges for your weight and height. Right. So for me, I, and I need to eat at least 2000 calories a day and that's being in a deficit 2000 calories in a day, folks, 2000 calories of ve vegetables and, and like good, healthy fats and proteins is a lot of food. <laughs> okay. But when you're eating things that are really like loaded with fat, um, it's really easy to go over that. Right. So that's, that's the thing is it, I find that the chronometer is helpful to get a baseline. So I used it for a couple of weeks to get an idea of what a like a solid nutrition day, like how many meals and what type of meals I could eat. And then since I already have a pretty good baseline, as far as my nutrition knowledge goes, like I just, I don't use it. I don't track anymore. I just know how much food I need to eat in a day. But if you're somebody who doesn't have that background, it's really useful to use the, the tracking. I do have to say though, just as with everything else, just make sure you're not getting neurotic about it, okay? It's not a bad thing. If you go over your calories one day, it's fine, whatever. You're gonna make it up. Like it's don't beat yourself up. Remember your goal is feeling good. Sometimes it feels good to eat more, okay? Sometimes we need to eat more. If you're dealing with an especially emotional situation, if you're dealing with stress at work, you're dealing with stressful interpersonal relationships, your body is overwhelmed, it's overloaded, and it needs extra calories, okay? So sometimes you need to eat more. But if you're tracking and, and remember, this, if, you're, if you're putting this all under the paradigm of feeling good, then you beating yourself up about eating more doesn't fucking feel good. So stop doing that. Right. Like, don't beat yourself up. Just understand that. Like, look at why. Like, think if you have a day where you ate more, think about why. Was it because you're stressed out? Was it because you were um, using food as a coping mechanism? Was it because you didn't eat enough the day before? Is it because you exercised a whole bunch? Because when you exercise, your appetite increases like crazy. Okay, like when I'm weight lift, lifting weights, I eat like a freaking horse, right? Like, actually, what do even horses eat? I eat like a bear. <laughs> Wait, yeah, bears are omnivores, right? Anyways. <laughs> okay, so um, so that's, that's the, the deal on chronometer. And the last thing that I wanted to talk about, um, as far as intuitive eating and kind of generalized nutrition strategies is, uh, is plant-based eating. Okay. Now, as you know, if you're following me or, you know, here's this information for you for the first time, if you're new to, to the Jen Garrett experience, uh, I am a vegan ish human. <laughs> okay. So I'm like a flexitarian technically it would be, I guess, if you had to come up with a word for it. Um, I eat mostly plants. I eat mostly plant-based diet. I, I avoid dairy like the plague because now that I don't um, eat it regularly, it makes me sick. Did you know that we're actually all supposed to be lactose intolerant and that like it's super unnatural for us to eat another animal's milk? Weird, right? The, uh, but uh, the one caveat is that, is that goat's enzymes, so the enzymes in goat milk is actually, so if I do eat some sort of cheese or a uh, yogurt or something like that, it's usually goat because uh, it doesn't make me want to shit my pants and vomit at the same time uh so i don't eat i don't eat, do the dairy and then meat i um people ask me a lot how i came like how did why did i decide to go vegan or why don't i eat meat right and so i'm never one to push the vegan agenda on people because i'm a firm believer that you can't tell people what to do and that everybody's going to do what they want to do but i'm going to share with you how i came to eating less plants so i was uh always like, meat 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 right like the north american diet and meat with every meal and then especially getting into the fitness industry and doing bodybuilding to the degree that I was for a number of years like you have to eat a lot of meat 
eat, right? Like I was eating like chicken breast, salmon, turkey, um, all sorts of like lean, lean meats, uh, every single meal. Right. And, um, I, uh, a few years ago, a very good friend of mine actually passed away from cancer. Uh, now listen, I'm 37 and my friend at the time, a few years ago was only 31 when this happened to her. And it was a very sad time, um, for all of us to watch, but, um, she, she got colon cancer guys and she died like a year within a year of being, um, diagnosed. And, uh, and so I started researching cancer because that's what you do, I guess. <laughs> and, uh, one of the things that kept coming up was a connection between body pH, uh, at like acidity versus alkaline, right? Acid alkaline. Um, and that, and then the correlation between an acidic diet and cancers, and then more, more, um, more into it is like specifically red meat and colon cancer. Now, if you remember what I was saying about how um, we're, you're, when you're in stress response and you're like cramming food into your body and then it just sits in your intestines and it goes rancid, meat is like the worst thing because one, it takes us, fat and proteins are the hardest thing for us to break down. So one, it's already having a hard time. Two, we're often stressed out, right? So you're stressed out you're not breaking down this fat and protein that's sitting in your intestine and then you're just eating, right? So you're like cramming food in, cramming food in, cramming food in, and it's just sitting there and it's rotting in your, in your belly. Right? So, um, this is one, again, why intermittent fasting is good because we only produce enough energy to actually digest one meal in a day. So when you're cramming food in yourself all day, all your resources are going towards digestion. Um, and, but then back again to the, the plant-based eating, <clears throat> learning that, was eye opening for me, but it wasn't enough for me to stop eating meat because <laughs> I couldn't. My paradigm was so like meat based that I couldn't. I was like, how do I even make a meal without eating meat? Right. So I started trying that. So I, um, a client of mine actually at the time had gotten me a vegan cookbook um, because she's like, I know you eat meat. And originally she gave me the recipes and I just like added meat to everything. <laughs> But I started actually trying to use them the way that they're intended, right? And started making plant-based meals. And I was like, okay, I can do this. And just like I was saying earlier, like whatever you put into your body the most often, it becomes what your body right? So the more that I ate um, plants and like plant-based uh, protein, the lighter that I felt and the more energy that I had and the more that my body craved that stuff. Okay, so it wasn't like I just was like, uh, I'm just going to not eat meat. And I just did it right away. I just gradually started changing my diet by introducing more plant based meals. And then um, and then as my friend's disease progressed, and I was hanging out with another person who's vegetarian, she shared with me actually, maybe the timeline, I can't, remember, it's a little bit blurry as far as the order of things. But um, I was hanging out with a friend of mine who is a vegetarian. And I, I was asking her the same questions, like what made you decide to not eat meat anymore? And, uh, and she told me, she's like, now, listen, I don't want to scare you because she's very much of the same opinion of me that like, you can't force the vegan agenda on anybody, like you can only inspire them, right? And like, what is right for me may not be right for you. So she told me, though, she's like, it's the, it was the fear, right? So like, thinking about our factory farming and the conditions that are these animals are living in, uh, they're born into fear, they're raised in fear, and they're killed in fear, right? And when you're afraid, <laughs> your body, remember, it's all ties back to our stress response, right? So you're an animal is afraid, it's eliciting a stress response, it's overloading its body with this stress response, its muscles are like, super tight the whole time, and it's got cortisol all throughout its entire body, right? So you're then taking that animal's flesh that has been afraid and in like it's like totally saturated with stress hormones and you're eating it <laughs> and then your body breaks it down and it makes you your it recreates your cells based on what you're eating so you're basically consuming fear and you're creating fear in your body right and what that comes out like is anxiety okay so learning that was another like oh okay but it still wasn't like a overnight thing like it definitely took me um some time to adjust, right? First little bit when I went more plant based, I was still eating eggs every day. Uh, and even to this day, like I still I have a carton of eggs in the fridge, I'll eat them a couple times a week. Um, I eat uh, fish, sometimes I'll do shrimp, I'm not really a big fishy fishy person, but I will eat fish. And then um, for the first it's been like three two, what year is it? Two? It's been almost three years since I started doing this. Um, and uh, 
Now, at the first bit, I was eating red meat like once a month or like every six weeks or every eight weeks. Uh, and now now I don't really even do that because I, I take collagen. So I, I do take a collagen supplement which and like a bone broth um, supplement because um, it helps with skin elasticity and your teeth and your nails. Um, okay, so I don't, I don't think that eating meat is wrong. I think that we are omnivores and I think that we do need meat protein. However, I firmly disagree with factory farming and the conditions in which most of these animals are raised plus the food they're eating corn or like you're eating other animals right like they're eating shit that they're not supposed to be eating and they're raised in an environment that's not conducive to their mental health right so they're like they're all of their flesh is filled with stress hormones um i also don't agree with the volume of meat that most north americans eat okay so like i i don't think that we should be completely vegan i don't think that we the way that most people eat is right either though right so if you think about it in far as far as like evolutionary type terms like if we were out hunting and foraging right like you'd kill an animal and then you would eat it and you, that would last you right so like eat meat and it, it also makes sense the way that our systems work like it's the hardest thing for us to break down and it takes the longest. So if you're stuffing meat into your body every day, it's just, you're not even getting a benefit out of it. You're just like poisoning yourself essentially, right? So just be mindful, one of the sources, um, a note on eggs as well, always, always buy free range eggs that are like grass fed natural as possible. It's one thing that I started doing that way early on because um, chickens who are stressed out and eating that eat corn, their ratio, so omega-6 uh, and omega-3s, we're supposed to have them one-to-one, -one, but in, in like corn-fed stressed out chicken eggs, omega-6 is like 20 times higher than omega-3s, and that actually increases inflammation. So and they just you, if you crack them, you can see the difference. Like the corn-fed one will be all pale and gross, and then the other one will be yellow and delicious, okay? Uh, so that, I just packed a whole bunch of information into that. I'm gonna go over the action points for you uh, as far as the takeaway goes, okay? So um, one, make your goal feeling good. There is no diet. You're not dieting. You're eating foods that make you feel good because you love your body and you wanna perform, okay? Two, that includes don't beat yourself up, okay? So, like, no beating yourself up for going off track because there's no fucking track to be on, okay? You're not on a diet. You are eating foods that make you feel good, okay? Number one, your goal is feeling good. Number two, drink a shit ton of water. You need at least three uh, liters, almost said ounces. <laughs> you need at least three liters of water in a day. More is better. Make a game out of it. Keep a little notch on your glass, get an app on your phone, make a game out of it. Try to get it in in the morning also so you're not up all night peeing. You will, there will be a period of time where you're just peeing all the time also, but your body adjusts to that, okay? It gets easier, okay? So one, feel good. Two, drink a shit ton of water. Three, intermittent fasting. So play around with an eating window, make it a, work for your schedule, move it around if you want. Make sure that you're eating enough calories during your eating window and be mindful if you are um, experiencing neuroticism or like pre, you're getting fixated on the calories or you're eating too much on days that you're not fasting. So start out by eating only one, like not eating breakfast or trying it one day a week, okay? Uh, and then, Track your food. So make sure that you're eating enough food uh, in your eating window. Also, just get an idea of how much food you're eating in general, what a day looks like as far as that goes. Chronometer is a great tool for that. And then um, plants. Eat more plants. Where, wherever you are on that spectrum as far as, like, the ethics of it or, like, the personal life choices, right? Like, um, you don't have to agree with the ethics of it. You don't have to be an activist to, to be more plant-based, okay? Everybody should eat more plants. So just try to incorporate more vegetables into your diet. Remember that if you don't like vegetables right now, it's just because your body isn't used to eating them. I never even knew what a lot of vegetables tasted like because I literally ate preservative like box food for most of my life, okay? So it wasn't until I was an adult that I started trying these things. And I, and the more that you eat them, the more acclimatized your body gets to it and, and you'll actually start to like them. I cannot go a day without vegetables now. Like if I don't eat, I, I'm kind of lazy with my food prep. So I, like if I eat like too many protein bars or like don't um, don't get enough vegetables in, my body's like, hey, like I literally feel sick if I don't eat vegetables. So I always have like cucumbers and peppers and shit that I can just grab and eat really quick. Okay. Um, yeah. And just a couple notes as well. Um, when it comes to your mindset with this stuff. So when you're eating, make sure that you're sitting still and that you're 
um, enjoying. So when you're eating, savor each bite. Think about what you're doing, right? Like just don't watch TV. Don't look at your phone. Just sit and enjoy your food. And the more that you can be in a happy place when you're eating, the, the better it is. Absolutely do not eat when you're angry. And do not multitask when you're eating because all you're doing is poisoning yourself. You're putting food into your body and it's going rancid in your body. It's going rancid in your gut. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's my lecture on intuitive eating. Thank you uh, for joining me. Uh, for those of you on the recording on YouTube here, uh, there is more to come as far as the course goes. For those of you who joined me on Instagram live, I hope you enjoyed the little preview here. This is from my uh, intuitive weight loss course, how to love your meat robot that I'm gearing up to launch on mastermind.com. So uh, if you liked this, if you got some, some benefit from this, just shoot me a comment. You can also send me your email address and I'll put you on my list. It's not salesy. I promise you, I know everybody's sending all these crazy emails these days. I'm literally just using it to practice my creative writing and to share with you the things that I'm learning. Okay. So, um, so if you got some benefit out of this, uh, please give me a follow. If you're not following me already, shoot me uh, a DM with your email and uh, I'll see you again soon. Thank you so much. Have a great day, everybody.